Hey guys, Jaredman here, back with more 500 Zoom. start with two tables here see how the action is so this player is unknown to me just deciding whether that makes me want to squeeze more or less with the ace jack off here <clears throat> Excuse my voice if I'm clearing my throat a lot. On 84, we'll open the fours from hijack. So on table two here with the pocket fours, on 89, we're going to bet. And I think this hand wants to bet more than it wants to check, regardless. Uh, he goes for a bit of a smaller check raise. And hijack versus big blind in these positions. Like, first of all, we don't get the c-bet range on this board. And when we do c-bet, I think we have to appeal this hand. I'm going to check on table one. little maybe overly cautious four ways but i think it's fine and now the river i do think it is good enough to value bet and easy fold now on table two Hijack versus big blind. The ranges are a little bit tighter pre-flop, which leads to a bit of a tighter post-flop strategy in general. Uh, but we still can't fold on the flop. We will turn our hand into a bluff on a decent amount of runouts, the pocket fours. Interesting three bet size there, big blind versus cutoff. I don't think I have to call the queen six suited versus that size. So ace 10 is going to be a check raise on this board versus one fourth, regardless of his stack size, at least some of the time, even versus under the gun. But I'm more inclined to do it versus a shorter stack, as I think I can just get it in on the flop. You know, I'm not loving getting it in on the flop, but. I think I can still get it on the flop. Yeah, and I think we bet normal on the turn. I don't think we go for the over bet strategy when the stacked ups are like this. And I still think my hand is strong enough to just get it in. I think a lot of his over pairs at that stacked up would First of all, bet larger, unless he's playing a one-fourth with range strategy on the flop, or second of all, three bet the flop. On 14, we're not going to open the 5-4 suited. I don't open the suited connectors pure from the cutoff, even. Table one, we're gonna raise some time, uh, call some times. 
So I saw this player three bet me to a small size, big blind versus cutoff, and now they're using a large size on this texture, which isn't necessarily bad to use a large size on this texture. It's just not kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Standard. <laughs> so there's a chance that he's a recreational player. Uh, I don't care that I rolled a 10 here after he bets 15. I really think he's got like, okay. Well, that's a disaster then if he folded, if he was just barreling that card with betting 110 on the turn with something with complete air. Uh, with 4 3 though, versus a recreational player. We could bet table two, but I rolled low. I think check back's fine as well. Versus a recreational player in the replayer here. <clears throat> I think that raising now on the turn with exactly 4-3 and trapping 7-8 if you want to trap makes the most sense. I don't know what to do on table two. Usually when I don't know what to do, if I think it's close, I'll just go with the number. Obviously, I'm deciding between bet and check back. He gets to overfold a lot on the flop, which means a lot of his range ends up being a king. But by the river, a lot of those kings want to bet themselves. So when you have queens, <clears throat> I always think I'm good. It's just, do I ever get called by worse? Does worse ever have to call me? And I think it does. Not to mention when you have two queens, you block the check raising range because the only hand he's really happy to check raise me with on the river is ace queen. Uh, some other ones that might check raise me might be like pocket tens that check called the flop. And we don't block that. So yeah, I, I don't know. Even though this board is horrible, we will play a decent amount of check raises. <clears throat> uh, we get to overfold a lot, even versus the one fifth, twenty percent bet. And the hands that we do continue, a lot of them get to continue as a check raise. So very good card for my check raising range. Not a great spot with my hand, and I don't think... So even though it's a good card, I don't think we get to just bet all the time. I do think there's some one-thirding that happens, that happens here. Because if we start over-betting... I think there's some normal betting and maybe some one-thirding that happens on the turn. If we start over-betting, then we just isolate ourselves to his full house advantage. That's not really what we want. So table two on the turn, you can split between one third and big bet. You have hand classes that want to do both. In these spots, I tend to just go to a one size strategy. Um, so half pot or check. We'll throw in maybe the check raise on table two. I don't like the 10 though. It's a check raise. The nine of hearts is really nice, but <clears throat> yeah. Because hands that might bet fold are straights and jack-10 of spades, jack-10 offsuit. So I think I'm just going to fold, actually. I don't like hero calling this combo. I think we have better hero, call, uh, hero calls in this spot. I think this spot gets very tight uh, by the river here, a lot tighter. Obviously, he has some bluffs that 
will be ahead of with the 10-9. Uh, and we have the blocker to the nine of hearts, which blocks some of his value range. But the ten of spades blocks some of his bluffs um, as well as his value. The nine of hearts in the lines where he bets the turn isn't as good as a different heart blocker as his nine X of hearts flushes would mainly check back the turn. Uh, we'll throw in a call with the weaker player in the big blind with pocket fives. You can three bet it, you can call it. I really only play calls if there's weaker players behind. So yeah, in this hand with the nine of hearts, he, he's mainly going to check back flush draws that have the nine of hearts on the turn. So when he bets, by the time we get to the river, it's not the most amazing blocker of all time. You know, it blocks jack nine offsuit. I don't think we really want to raise this hand class much, if ever. Even though I rolled a high number with the queen jack, I don't think it gets in there too often on this texture. And then on the 10, while... Uh, it looks like a card that we might want to lead. I tend not to lead in this spot where he bets range on the flop, which I'm assuming is what he's doing because we faced the small bet. Uh, if he bet big on the flop, I'd be more inclined to lead on the 10 because he can still have tons of 10x that if he's betting range on the flop. And we're just going to go for the big bet on the river. I don't think my range wants to do as much over betting as it may look like at first glance. I could be wrong on that actually. Maybe maybe I'm just kind of playing my hand here and betting this size. I don't mind hero calling this hand some of the time and I rolled a 92, so we'll go for the hero call. I like the queen of clubs side card. Okay, he has a 10 to check back. It's gonna happen sometimes. Yeah, on the river here, maybe I just want to play over better block. I think we're going to give this one up on table one. Rolled a low number. It's a card where we're going to be betting super polar. Uh, we will check raise some of our 3x on the flop at a decent frequency. Decent frequency, and we have pocket twos as well as, <clears throat> excuse me, as well as, you know, some straight draws and some total air. And in that context, we can't really uh, just bet range. Definitely gonna bluff the river though, it's just a matter of size. So we river some ASEX, so I think I'm just gonna play a normal bet strategy with my range, because I think ASEX definitely wanna. And I timed out. That's okay. <laughs> Checking back this flop some of the time. Uh, I doubt loses me an EV. This hand really wants to bet, though. I would have bet this hand uh, on the flop. <clears throat> Classic me timing out playing two tables. You should see me when I play four tables. So I know in theory here, I don't think I'm supposed to bet this one on the river. I just in practice, I lose to a lot of A size, which sucks. Yeah, that's fine. I let him get there. <laughs> Literally just let him win that hand because I timed out. <laughs> Oops. I was focused on this hand. 
So some a lot of our check raising range, not a lot, but a decent portion of our check raising range on the flop will be hands like ace four suited, ace five suited that didn't three bet pre flop, uh, as well as ace two. So we have some ace x, and I think ace x are definitely strong enough to go for the normal bet on the river. I'm gonna bet a size that I think an ace is gonna call me, and there's no other logic to that. If I get jammed on, I think I'm gonna fold. With these positions, even a, a recreational's calling range, I don't see him turning an, enough hands into a bluff on the river. <clears throat> uh, that queen jack offhand. Yeah, I don't hate hero calling this combo on the river. Uh, you know, some of the time. We definitely don't want to do it all the time because then we'll be calling way too much. But the queen of clubs is nice as if he had a hand that had the queen of clubs in it, he's likely to continue bluffing on the turn. Like think of all, think of all the combos that he can have that would have the queen of clubs in it, like king queen off with the queen of clubs. Uh, queen nine off with the queen of clubs, any queen x flush draw, uh, pocket, like just tons of hands, tons of hands, right? So by the river, he doesn't have those air hands that have the queen of clubs to bluff raise me anymore. And he's never bluff raising a jack. So I think that he's, he's not bluff raising me with the queen of clubs and he's not bluff raising me with the jack of hearts. So we beat bluff, so might as well call sometimes. I'm going to 4-bet the king-queen off. It's a very interesting board. So I'm pretty sure there's still jams on this board. I know on the flush draw version there's a lot of jams. And I'm pretty sure on the rainbow version we play jams as well. And I think this combo wants to jam. Yeah, when he has 10s, he has 10s, right? Uh, he's not always going to have 10s or jacks. <laughs> Those jam sometimes, preflop, and yeah. 10s is going to call preflop as well, low frequency. I guess 10s doesn't jam, but jacks jams. Being deeper, I like three betting ace queen suited even more. Even from out of position. I'm gonna start with a check on the flop. <clears throat> It's a relatively good board for the big blind three better, as in neither player has many 2x and neither player has much pocket sixes. He obviously has more pocket sixes than we do. Uh, however, because it's big blind versus hijack and because we are very deep, he's going to have even pocket kings, he's going to have pocket queens, he's going to have pocket jacks. So we do have to proceed with caution. Um, as well as the fact that because there's a flush draw on the board, it kind of dilutes the equity of our over pairs. Because any flush draw has good equity versus our over pairs, which of course lowers the equity total of our over pairs. This will get in the 3-bet range some of the time on table 2. Make sure we're recording here. So this is a pretty good board for the big blind, I'd say. 
And we do have a well-defined checking range, however, and I think I'm gonna play one third or check on this board, and I'm pretty sure that that's what, I'm pretty sure that's allowed, is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Maybe half pot or check is still slightly better. And on 92 and with this exact hand, I do like betting more than I like checking. I'd rather check a hand like Jack-10 if we're gonna be checking a 10 here. I'm gonna start with a small bet versus two recreationals here at table one. I think it's gonna clarify the hand for me, and while I don't think I'm often ahead if called, uh, I can be, obviously. They can have Broadway straight draws, they can have 10, 9, 9, 8, obviously flush draws. <clears throat> I think Queen 10 off is actually really close versus this size. I think it's really close. Uh, I might bluff raise the river here. When he checks, I think I win enough of the time to not justify bluffing this here. I do think this play by recreationals is an ace sometimes, but I also think it's total nothing sometimes. So. I'd rather bluff something else. Sometimes it's like mergey too, right? You don't want to put too much. You don't want to go too hard in one direction when you're going with reads versus recreationals because you'll surprise yourself sometimes. Or rather, they'll surprise you. The hand in the replay here on the 10-9-9 rainbow board, you can get away with betting your range small. I just think that when you're three betting from the big blind, you do have some hands that just completely brick this board and also have no backdoor flush draw, like a six of spades, for example. And unfortunately, you're gonna have to, uh, you don't have to, but <laughs> you just, you'll see a very well-defined checking range appear on these boards of hands that just want a pure check regardless of what strategy you choose, what sizing strategy you choose. And there's just too much EV loss. So this hand class, it doesn't really want a check raise. <clears throat> it could. Um, I really prefer just betting this hand class, maybe like very low frequency checking this hand. And this flop in general gets to be bet very high frequency. I like having the nine of diamonds and not having a spade. I don't think I wanna play any over bets here. I think I'm gonna play either half pot or check or something like 75 or check. I think 75 or check. Yeah, I think I'm gonna play 75 or check in this spot. I don't think that it's necessary to split here. So now on the river, I just block his folds. We never really want to barrel diamond hands on the river. I block 9-8 himself. I block, I do block jack-9, which is kind of nice. But otherwise, I don't like the 9 of diamonds. 
basically any hand that you can call with preflop that has nine of diamonds plus another diamond would take his line almost pure which means those are all his snap folds by the river so i'm really just kind of weighting his range towards a 10 a queen or a very very strong hand So I think we give this one up. I also don't think we're allowed to just go crazy on this river. This river is better for him than it is for us, I believe. A lot of the hands that we were betting on the flop and turn were hands that are strong now. Like they were strong on the flop, they were strong in the turn. While we, we will have some spade hands, obviously, uh, a better river would have been a brick. This is a flop you could probably just bet range and not really worry too much about it. He doesn't have pocket queens. He doesn't have pocket tens. Queen ten suited. Three bets pre flop. He doesn't have ten six off. He doesn't have. He could have queen six off. He doesn't have aces. He doesn't have kings. He doesn't have ace queen. He doesn't have king queen suited. Doesn't even have queen jack suited. And he has all this suited junk that I had to call you. So this exact board, we're allowed to lead. Uh, but I, if I remember correctly, it doesn't actually gain you much EV. If it was seven six five instead, uh, we could lead range, and it performs better than checking probably. Uh, we're basically saying, you know, we have a higher concentration of these low cards and sets than you do, being the three better from the button because he would call a lot of those hands and not three bet them. Also, we just have a higher concentration because we have the calling range. So on the seven, I think we still want to do a decent amount of blocking and a decent amount of checking. Mm, no, is that correct? I know we want to do a decent amount of checking because that just it kind of lowered the value of some of our pair plus straight draw hands. Like 6-5 just had its value lowered a lot, as in 6-5 can no longer hit a 5 to beat his over pairs. But we did improve to some 7x. Um, and we do still have some hands we want to bet for. Maybe we want to bet bigger check on the turn. That might have been a mistake. Uh, River, we might want to check call, though. I think Alex is good enough to realize he's supposed to float some hands as weak as King-Queen on the turn. Maybe not though. Versus that size, we don't have to call very often. Yeah, I'm not going to hear a call versus that size very often with the ace 10 there, if ever. Yeah, I think I messed up the turn. I think I'd rather check or bet larger on the turn. And just conceptually, I think I don't want to block the turn there. Who knows, though? Specifically with my hand, I think I would just, I think I just like betting big on the turn. Maybe even just over betting it. See, I, I like more betting when I have the ten of clubs than if I had a hand like ace queen of clubs on the turn. Because the queen of clubs block some hands that would fold the turn. 
And I think we still do want him to fold when we're betting a hand like ace queen of clubs. Because he's going to float the flop with, for example, king queen with the queen of clubs. Uh, he doesn't have king 10 off with the 10 of clubs to float the flop with. He doesn't have offsuit Broadway 10x combos is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but the ace still blocks folds. I'm pretty sure the only hand on the river in this hand here that would want to bet his size yeah maybe he's allowed to yeah no never mind he could probably bet over pairs for that size because some of the hands that would want to bet block on the turn if I am playing a block strategy are going to be hands like 6x, pocket 5s, pocket 8s, pocket 9s. Uh, very low frequency three bet with the low pairs here. You don't need to do this as well. You can just play simplified preflop ranges. That's, for example, with three bet nines plus here and not mix in the pairs where instead um, I'm folding nines and maybe even a little bit of tens. And instead choosing to three bet some of the lower pairs, some pseudo connectors. It doesn't really matter, to be honest. Like as long as your preflop strategy is reasonable, it doesn't really matter. <clears throat> So in a 96, we will bet this combo. We're going to be checking mostly on this flop because uh, I'm going to play over better check. So we'll be checking like 70, 75% of the time, something like that. And a lot of these hands that look like really good bets because the board is really good for you, you have to be careful not to overdo it. Otherwise... You're just putting in too much money with too weak of a range. So hand classes like this don't get to bet very often, is what I'm trying to say. Your high, your higher frequency bets are going to be your Broadway straight draws, um, as well as 4x. I think like 5-4 gets in there. If you open 5-3 suited, that gets in there. Very high frequency. <clears throat> in general, when you're betting very, very large in relation to the size of the pot, on a street that's not the river, you want to be more equity driven. It's not always true. Uh, more so in single race pots, I'd say.
So I will be playing checkbacks on this board. Under the gun versus big blind. <coughs> and this hand class is one of the hand classes that really wants to check back. If we had the queen of spades or the ace of spades, it gets into the higher frequency betting range. So we're going to check back some king x. We're going to check back, you know, tens through queens at decent frequency. We're going to check back some 9x, some 8x, some flush draws, some straight draws. Not really checking back pocket aces or ace king. Pretty good board for the three better on table two. Hijack versus button. He doesn't have threes and fives pure. Man, that's a really, really good card for me, but I don't think I want to bet this hand. It's just probably the worst hand to bet. We're blocking ace 10 of spades and ace jack of spades as well as king jack of spades and maybe even king 10 of spades might float the flop versus one third. I don't know. That was... We're also blocking jacks and tens which might fold the turn some of the time. <clears throat> I do think we get to bet a lot in this turn, though. It being a blank turn is just better for the person with the polar range, I believe. Not to mention it removes a combo of pocket threes. Not that actually that doesn't matter that much. Pocket threes would check raise the flop mostly, if not pure. So most of his range, again, it really sucks having the 10. Most of his range here is sixes through tens. But I think we're getting too thin. If we're going to check back a jack, it's going to be jack 10. I think king jack might be the bottom of the hands we want to bet. It's getting too thin, even though, again, I think I'm mostly good on the river. Uh, we have to get called by worse in order to evaluate, for a value bet to outperform checking back. And in this case, I don't think I get called by the lower pairs enough to justify giving him the strategic option of check raising me as a bluff, <clears throat> which I imagine some of the lower pairs are going to get in there as his bluff check raises. At least that's what should be happening. Not to mention he has jack x of diamonds, like king jack of diamonds, ace jack of diamonds, that are going to be snap calls that are better than me. And then he just has some queens that decided to trap the river. For example, a hand like queen jack. Or even a hand like ace queen. Might check the river sometimes. Check back here on table one. We'll be playing a one third or check strategy. And I think this hand class, or this hand specifically, while very strong, makes a decent check back as well. On a six, we'll check back again. Raising river versus Normal better block and just calling river versus over bet. We will be bet calling here though. We're trying to get hero called by an eight when we have our hand basically because we block a nine that can call us and we block the river jack that can call us. And I think Asex is mostly betting river. So yeah, kind of blocking the hands that can call us. But it would be too ridiculous to check back. We have a very strong hand when it goes check, check, check like that.
I've seen some preflop charts that call tens low frequency, and the deeper you get, the more I see the more tens gets called there. But uh, I'm just three betting tens pure, especially versus a three x open where we're getting a worse price on our calls. <clears throat> Again, sorry for clearing my throat in the microphone. I don't know how to mute my microphone easily. I should set up like a hot key or something for that. This microphone is a rather cheap one I bought off Amazon and it doesn't have a mute button. I'm gonna three bet the short stacked unknown player. These types of hand classes play better at shorter stacks anyways, whereas a hand like ace eight suited plays worse or ace four suited plays worse, I should say. The shorter you go, at 80 it's kind of similar to 100 from what I remember though. There's not too much difference. Just a little bit of shift towards higher cards. So I will be calling queens some of the time here, but it's gonna be low frequency. I'm gonna mainly four bet queens. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna go with my read that this player is likely a recreational player. And based on that read, I'm gonna one third the turn and then bet the river even though my hand class, I don't think ever wants to do that. Start with a very small bet on table two. I think we can do it with range here. We double block ace queen, ace queen suited as well as ace queen off, which is really nice. For hero calling rivers, <clears throat> I think there might be a very small amount of betting again with pocket queens even on the turn, but we're going to check it back. And then the river, I do like my hand for a hero call. I think I'm going to hero call. It's the only thing that doesn't want me to hero call is that it's a spot where I think it's going to be under bluffed. Because the king looks scary, and it is scary because I, I just rivered pocket kings. Just sizing up a bit because we're a little bit deeper. Uh, and yeah, we can't value bet queens. <clears throat> so like, if he goes all in on the river here, I do think my hand wants to call sometimes. As crazy as that sounds. like His main value hand is ace-queen. And his bluffs are going to be missed flush draws and 7-8. Maybe even like 10-8 suited if he called the 4-bet. So we don't block any of the bluffs and we double block the value. I could be going crazy, but yeah, I, I think I would just have to call with this combo of queens. Because in 4-bet pots, even versus 10%, the queen of clubs doesn't matter. Because I don't think he gets to float queen jack of clubs on the flop. Even versus 10% on this board. <clears throat> so like queen jack of clubs might be a snap bluff if you get to the river but i'm pretty sure that folds the flop so i, I really like my combo gotta be careful in general in position not to overstab especially versus good players queen five three while queen high boards are very very good for the small blind opener uh when there's the double low interaction you do have to build checking ranges So I'm going to play half potter check here on the turn. <clears throat> Basically saying that I'm going to put all my queen x into the strong, into the half pot range, as well as my hands that want to bet half pot for protection, like a five, a two, the check back the flop, like pocket sixes. Uh, even though I think over better check 
might be the best strategy on the turn here from imposition's perspective. I think we have a very clear value bet now and very tough spot versus check raise. <clears throat> so his main check raise for value would be a queen that traps and one of the queen x that might trap. Um, queen x that might trap would be like queen two, queen five that trapped the flop and then maybe a queen that would check call the turn might be the very, very lowest ones. Yeah, his, his hero call seems reasonable. He called with a7. <clears throat> he doesn't get... <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, man, this is brutal. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not sick. I just, whenever I talk too much in these videos... Ah, what a horrible spot with a6. I'm going to fold. I'm going to ignore the random number here on table two and just call under the gun versus big blind three bet with ace king off versus the unknown player who's been taking a bit of, you know, some weird lines and some weird sizes. Not to mention deeper, I'm less inclined to four bet ace king off to begin with. In this spot, we shouldn't be four betting ace king off much at all, even 100 big blinds deep. Okay, um, I, I don't think I've seen many showdowns from this player, so there's potential that there exists a spaz portion of his range, just total craziness. And I do like keeping that portion in his range. However, I don't think that's enough to justify checking back here. I think he can have hands like ace-5, ace-4. Again, I think a half-pot bet performs well, in theory, as a one-size strategy on the turn. Versus the big blind specifically, uh, because his range is so spread out between some random junky hands. For example, like low frequency, six eight suited. <clears throat> I might might not be able to upload this video with all of the throat clearing. I don't know how streamers do it, to be honest. After like 30 minutes and I'm constantly drinking water, my throat just goes, my voice goes. What was I saying? Yeah, so the small bet's effective versus the big blind because he has a lot of hands that have to fold regardless of the size that they face. So even though the hands that you want to bet for value potentially are very narrow and that would usually lend towards a polar range. The structure of his range means that one third is still effective. In this spot, I don't know if that's necessarily true though on this exact, exact spot. All right, we're gonna wrap this video up. I gotta go drink some honey. Play this ace jack, and then that'll be it for this video. I was just kidding about playing that ace jack. Uh, that was April Fool's joke. April Fool's. All right, take care, guys.